Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin from CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together, discuss Japanese woodblock prints, paintings, history, and culture. This is a take two. I actually tried to do this video earlier in the day when I usually do them, uh, but I had some problems connecting and um, the quality, the audio quality was not great. So I decided to do this video again. So for those of you who joined me earlier in the day, well, welcome back. Um, I hope I don't bore you with the same information, but um, we'll see what we can find here. Maybe the second time we'll discover new things. But um, anyway, today's video, it features a very important 20th century uh, Shinhanga printmaker. His name is Kawase Hasui. And Hasui uh, worked with Watanabe and uh, a few other publishers. And I thought to, today would be kind of neat to show two prints produced by two different publishers by the same artist. Um, and the two prints depict pretty much the same uh, subject. It's a snow scene at a temple but done a couple years apart by two different, but also very important um, Shinhanga publishers. So um, without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. Perhaps you'll be able to see both of them side by side. Um, these two prints are by Hasui. And for those of you who are new to 20th century Japanese prints, Hasui was a, an important um, Shinhanga artist. Shinhanga meaning that it, the genre of printmaking where the artist um, conceived of the design and uh, was hired by a publisher to produce the design. The publisher then uh, went ahead and hired uh, a woodblock print carvers and and woodblock print uh, printers, and they uh, and then they produced the 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 woodblock print. So it was a collaborative process. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the, in this case, these two different designs were done by Hasui, but for different publishers. And we'll start uh, with this one. Um, and this is a beautiful design. Um, it's basically Kiyomizu Temple. For those of you who've been to Kyoto, um, it's immediately recognizable. The That veranda is iconic. It's been reproduced in dozens of woodblock prints by a variety of different artists, as well as paintings and, and some photography. So, I mean, this is an iconic scene. And Hasui uh, was hired by the Doe Publishing House. Doi, I mean, D-O-I. And this print was produced in 1929. If you look at the print carefully, you'll notice the, the information on the bottom left corner this is this designates the print published by Doi, but it also um, includes information that indicates it's a very early first state. State meaning that this is the first printing of this uh, design. Um, I don't use the term edition because this particular design was not numbered. There are Hasui designs that are numbered, and so when they are numbered, you can basically describe those impressions by addition. But because this print was never numbered, <clears throat> excuse me, we describe them as first state or an early state or a later state. Um, and so in this particular uh, first state impression, um, I'm gonna highlight some really wonderful printing um, qualities in the earliest printing. So for example, if we zoom in, We'll see this wonderful, faint but uh, but but present mountain range that is in the background. For those of you who've been to Kiyomizu Temple, you'll note that it's it's up in the hills, kind of where the mountains are, and you could also see the mountains all around that surround Kyoto. And in this printing, uh, they're done with such a subtlety that it's just basically uh, done in almost in a shadow. Uh, the background here, there's a wonderful bokashi of 
dark to light, this gradation um, of, of color from dark to light. It's masterful on how it's blended in with the background. You also get a sense of a wood, wood grain that's also been used to print this background that creates a wonderful atmospheric um, quality within the print. So I'm gonna go zoom in so you can really see that effect. You do not see this on the later printings. And when I say later, you don't see them on the later pre-war printings, let alone the post-war printings. And those are some of the post-war printings, I see this the, the background uh, here, the mountain range with a harder edge. So the subtlety is gone. And in here, the Bokashi that creates this really subtle atmospheric quality that really makes the print, it, it's pretty much gone. And, um, and in this design or in this impression, the other early embellishments that you'll find, I'm gonna zoom in so you could see, there's this wonderful blue in the, in the, in the um, like in the, the rooftop here that extends into the veranda. And that blue serves a purpose. It highlights the, the white snowflake designs that have been cut out um, with a separate block, of course. And so they printed this so you could see the snow falling even on the, the white background. And I should point out that this white is in fact the color, the natural color of the paper. So when the paper has tones over time, um, you, you'll see this as more yellowish or even brown, which is incorrect. This is the correct tone of the paper when you see a print in pristine condition as such as this one. So uh, the other thing I'm gonna point out on, a, on this Im impression, you'll see the, the yellow here around the kimono. Either it looks like it, it probably is a scarf and then there's another scarf here that has kind of a, a purplish color. These, these colors are typically missing on impressions that have been exposed to light. And so I wanna highlight how wonderful this impression is and what a early or very, I mean, this is the first state impression in perfect condition, what it should really look like. I'm gonna zoom in so you can get a better sense of the printing. Now, something I noticed in my earlier broadcast, which uh, unfortunately I deleted partly because of the quality of the audio and, and the video, is there's these figures coming into the, the hallway here that leads to the veranda. I've never noticed that before. And there's another figure here with an umbrella. So I've always sort of fixated on these two figures. But in silhouette, there's a few more in the background here and here. And actually another person right there. So I actually thought that was neat. And it was, it's an example of, you know, when you look at your prints, you examine them closely, you can always find new things. I do. Uh, what it, I, mean, I always find nuances in the printing. But in this case, uh, parts of the design really kind of um, sort of popped out um, and from the shadows, literally, in this case, and so I was able to notice them. So I thought that was neat. I'm glad I did this video. So this print, as I mentioned, was done in 1927 um, for the Doi Publishing House. And I, I, I'm sorry, 1929. I keep thinking 27. And the reason why I say 27, because this print was done in 1927. And this design was done for the Watanabe Publishing House. Watanabe uh, was a very famous Shinhanga publisher who is credited with starting the Shinhanga movement. And it was actually Watanabe that discovered Hasui. And, uh, and so, in Hasui's career, he produced about 600 prints. And the vast majority, I would say about 90% of them was with Watanabe. But he did produce some with Doi. I would say maybe two dozen at least. And, and so um, in this case, this is you know, a wonderful Watanabe published uh, design. 
Um, we have the Watanabe stamp here. Uh, this is an early cartouche, indicates this printing is pre-war and early. And, uh, you know, this, this design is very similar to this. It illustrates a, a temple. Uh, it's called Tanoji Temple, and it's in Osaka. Um, both of these are in Kansai, this being in Kyoto, and Osaka is the largest city in, in that particular region. Um, you know, Kyoto to Osaka is, I don't know, it's about, if you take a bullet train, it's about 45 minutes or, or so. Um, and so, um, you know, this just this is just yet another iconic design. Uh, Hasui is most known for his snow scenes, uh, particularly the ones um, featuring temples. And there's two or three that are really famous, all published by Watanabe. And this is one of them. Um, this is probably in the top three, if not five, of his snow scenes. And uh, we could see why. It's a gorgeous design. So I'm going to zoom in and so you could have a look, a closer look. Here we have a, a figure, a lone figure, and it's interesting, this figure, I'm assuming it's a woman, is wearing wooden uh, uh, shoes or getas. You could see the foot tracks um, of this figure as uh, it travels up into the sort of where the temple door, um, the opening is, and then it leads you into the temple complex there. You could see the beautiful pagoda in the background in the main hall. And the, the use of light in this print is masterful. You could see kind of a, a lighter printing here, which suggests moonlight reflecting off the top. Here, the snow here is also kind of white, um, as is at the bottom. And there's some shading here. So here, it's not all white. This is kind of a grayish color that most people don't notice, and there's some more gray there. And the gray actually serves to highlight the whiteness uh, in the center here. And it, it, it brings the eye closer to the figure. It almost sort of creates that track into how the eye enters into the design and, you, and then it sort of moves upward. I think what's interesting here to compare these two, they're, they're both quite striking and beautiful, and they both do pretty much the same thing, showing a nostalgic view of old Japan. We don't see any elements of modernism here, and there are no light poles, uh, there, there's no electricity poles or anything like that. Uh, th this could be Japan of the Edo period. And um, it, particularly how the, the inhabitants of these landscapes appear, you know, with paper umbrellas and traditional kimonos, uh, the, you know, the, these are not modern people of the 20th century, um, and they're not dressed that way. And so these, these two designs are nostalgic, they're, they're beautiful, but they're looking back towards the Edo period. And, and the reason for this um, is that Hasui was producing designs for Watanabe, and Watanabe wanted um, idyllic scenes to sell to his clients. And at this time, they were most, mostly Europeans and Americans, or at least Westerners. Certainly, some of these ended up in the hands of the Japanese, of course. But by and large, the market for these 20th century prints was in the West. And Watanabe found it much more um, appealing for Westerners to, to, you know, to, to buy idyllic scenes of Japan as it once was, not as it was emerging and changing. When these two designs were produced, there were, it's about almost 1930. And so you had mogas and mobos, modern boys and modern girls dressed um, in Western clothing, going to jazz cafes. There were cars, there was certainly electricity, um, not necessarily in the country, but, but in the larger cities there were. And so you see none of that. You see absolutely none of that. And, you know, to this day, 
these two designs are really sought after because they do present a, a view of a Japan that we all look for in some ways when we travel and, and see, visit Japan for ourselves. And we can have a little bit of a taste of it, particularly if we travel to, to temples uh, such as Kiyomizu. And, and, but at the same time, had Hasui shown the view from this angle out, you would see on here, you would see traffic, you would see the lights of the city, and he chose to depict the, the temple in this direction. No lights, just the light of the night, um, light enough that the moon provides over a beautiful snowfall. So, and, and that's the case for both of them. And I, I thought I'd, I should mention this um, because it is part of the analysis of these early 20th century prints um, that, uh, you know, it, it's, wor it worth, it's worth uh, mentioning. So I'm gonna zoom in so you could see both of them one last time. And if you're just joining us, I want to encourage you to go back and watch the beginning of the video. Uh, said a few things about the, the types of impressions these two represent. So I want to thank all of you for joining me um, yet again on Woodblock Wednesday. If you haven't had a chance, I invite all of you to visit my website at collectingjapaneseprints.com. Uh, on the site, you'll see a wonderful group of prints. There's a lot of research that goes into our listings, so feel free to, to read about each particular design. I also have a bookstore uh, where you could find rare and hard to find um, books on Japanese prints and paintings. And also, if you like this video, all of my Woodblock Wednesday videos are archived on my website so you could quickly refer to any of them based on the particular topic. Um, just go to the, the website collectingjapaneseprints.com and click on Woodblock Wednesday at the bottom. You'll, you'll be able to access all the videos. So thanks again for joining me and hopefully uh, if you could join us next week uh, there won't be any interruptions or any problems with my connection as it was earlier today. I apologize for that and so this is a redo of, uh, of my earlier video, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope uh, you'll be able to enjoy, uh, in, enjoy it also. Join us next week where we examine uh, a print or two by another artist. So thanks again for joining me. See you next time. Bye.